What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and welcome to part 2 of our Spec Ops 20 task list. Now part 2 is going to cover tasks 12 through 22 and while I am sorry about the delay, I do have some good news to tell you about future task list videos. Starting with the very next Spec Ops we're going to do things entirely different. I'm going to do a full walkthrough showing how to complete each individual task. This probably means we'll do about 5 per video, but another good thing about it is I'll put them out much more frequently and so I won't be sitting around waiting for the research to complete before I put out a new part. And speaking of research, that's exactly where we left off with the Kinetic Blade Mark 1. Now after finishing that, you have to collect 25 unstable ISO 8. The easiest way to do this is through daily gifts and also visiting your allies. For me, I barely finished this one by visiting all my allies' maps because I already collected the daily gifts, so please try not to make the same mistake. Once you collect 25 unstable ISO 8, you'll get 100 experience, and then you can move on to task number 13. For this one, you must use 4 distress calls, and you can use these in any mission. The only thing tricky about this task is if you're not used to using them, you may forget. I actually forget myself quite a few times when I'm on this type of task. Once you complete this, you get another 100 experience, how nice. It's the perfect reward for us level 300s and for those who don't want to level up. Now for step number 14 of 25, you must defeat Nebula. She is the boss of Mission 2. After you manage to defeat her, you unlock Mission 3 in Spec Ops 20. She really isn't that difficult, I believe she's an infiltrator so just bring in a scrapper. I do have to say though, one of the annoying things is the task that follows this. For task 15, you have to use Star-Lord's Cold Snap one time, Quantum Leap two times, and Lit Up once. The reason I say this is annoying is because you just finished a mission in which he was a team up. Now you're going to have to go into a brand new mission and fight all the way until you can use Star-Lord once again. This really frustrated me, but we did finish it and we got the blueprint for the Kinetic Blade Mark II. So that's going to bring us to yet another research, and let's go ahead and check out task number 16. Kinetic Re-Engineering. We'll have to go to the lab and create the Kinetic Blade Mark II. Let's see just how much Unstable ISO-8 and how much time this one's going to take. It looks like one full day and 80 Unstable ISO-8. We barely had enough to start this one, but what matters is we could. So let's go ahead and get this one going, and then we'll skip ahead in time. 24 hours later we have the Kinetic Blade Mark II. More importantly, we complete the task, and we get 100 experience. We also get to move on to task number 17. For this one, if you're lucky, it'll pop up completed, and that's because you have to get two stars of mastery in Mission 2. If you didn't happen to get enough your first playthrough, you'll have to go back through Mission 2 once again. Then after completing this, you'll move on to task number 18. This is where the Spec Ops gets pretty nice if you already have all these heroes. For branching out 18 of 25, you have to use Groot's I Am Groot three times. That is his first ability, and then you have to use his second ability, I Am Groot, two times. Now if you have him recruited, you can use him in any mission, and you will get credit. Otherwise, you have to find them in Mission 2 and Mission 3 as a team-up. When you finish this one, you'll get 1,000 silver, and then it's off to step 19. Here you'll have to win three PvP battles. This time, just fighting isn't enough. So you have to go into practice mode, and you can win any three PvP battles, and you'll get credit for Task 19. As a reward, you get 200 experience, and now it's time for Task number 20. Now we're getting pretty close to the home stretch. For number 20 of 25, it's another pretty good one if you already have the hero. For this you have to use Gamora's Mortal Strike three times and her Whirlwind once. If you already have her unlocked you can do this in any mission, otherwise you have to find her in missions 1 and 3 as a team up. When you complete this one you're given your final blueprint, the Kinetic Energy Blade. This is part of the Galaxy set, and it will be your last research of the Spec Ops. It has a counterattack, melt armor, and generates cosmic energy. That of course brings us to task number 21, create the kinetic energy blade in the lab. 
Now at first this one gave me problems because I didn't have enough unstable ISO weight, but luckily I didn't collect any daily gifts or visit any of my allies. So after doing all that I got 101 unstable ISO weight, just barely enough to research. This research also takes 1 day and 12 hours. So that's one of the things that I was waiting on for quite some time and why I was delayed. But I did finally complete it today, so skipping ahead, we have the fourth piece of the galaxy set and we finished task 21. This will also bring us to task 22 which is currently where I'm at. You have to defeat Ronin, boss of mission 3. This means that I'm very close to the end of Spec Ops 20 and the recruitment of Star-Lord. The very next part will be the finale and we'll also take a look at Star-Lord in action. I'm currently thinking that that should happen sometime on Tuesday, so please stay tuned for that. For now, that's going to be it for this video, and I will try to have an All Hail the King episode later today. Lastly, I want to thank you all for watching, and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, good luck, and take care.